In this video, we're gonna be talking about how I pick the best dividend stocks for my portfolio. It's important when you're picking dividend stocks to look at low volatility companies that are going to con keep continue paying. It's not very exciting. It's not gonna go up and triple in value overnight, but what you want are companies that are gonna keep paying you money essentially forevermore, whether you hold them for five, 10, 20, 50 years. These are stocks that you're gonna be able to hand over to your children essentially paying a massive yield at that point. So these are the companies that you want to construct your dividend portfolio. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please stick around after the intro, smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. That'd be amazing. So the first thing we are looking at here is low payout ratio. This is when a company's dividend, how a company's dividends compare to the net income that they earn. A low payout ratio is better, meaning the company can reinvest profit into R&D and keep and sustain and grow the business. This is really important for the company going forward in terms of the sustainability of the business. It's as simple, it's as, simple as that. You want them to be able to pay you the maximum dividend that they can, but also maintain and grow the business and keep that dividend going over the long term. That is so important when you're looking into dividend paying stocks. The next ratio is a low debt to equity ratio. You want that to be lower than two. Now the debt to equity ratio uh, compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity, usually used to calculate how much leverage a company is actually using. A higher leverage ratio suggests the company is higher risk to its shareholders. So you can simply do this by short term debt, long term debt and other fixed payments over the shareholders equity. Now obviously we want this sort of ratio to be low again because you don't want your companies leveraging debt against the company to achieve its operations or in the worst case scenario actually take on debt to pay dividends. That is something that you really don't want to do. The next is that you should be looking for is a market cap of over $10 billion. This brings the volatility level of this company down massively. So dividend companies are usually large, well-established companies. The larger the cap tends to mean less volatility, though not always. When a company is smaller and in its growth stages, profits are better off being reinvested rather than paid as dividends. So this is when you don't often see smaller companies paying dividends, but then at the same time you see companies like um, Tesla, Facebook, Amazon, all huge multi-billion dollars, trillion dollar companies in some cases still not paying a dividend. This is because they're reinvesting all that profit into growing the company even further and pay shareholders back that way. So these sort of companies shouldn't really be included in a dividend income building portfolio. And then as you can see on the right hand side here, you can see the difference between a small cap a mid cap and then a large cap company. So you've got 300 million to 2 billion is small cap, uh, two to 10 billion is mid cap, and then 10 billion is a large cap company. Now you can find companies that are obviously less than $10 billion in value that do pay dividends and do have a good history. It's just the share prices might not be as low volatility as you might expect. Essentially you're looking for the to buy into these companies and then literally chuck them over your shoulder and forget about them and they're going to just keep paying you and paying you and paying you quarter after quarter, year after year for as long as you decide to hold the company and that is exactly what you're looking for. It's never going to be the most exciting thing in the world, of course it isn't, but each building block that you get, each share that you buy in the company is going to be an extra amount of passive income and dividend income earned that you can then buy more of this company with. Now the next thing to look at is how long the history of these dividend paying companies, how long has the company you're looking into been paying dividends? Now really, you want at least 10 years of consecutive dividend raises. This then gives you an indication of just how healthy this company is. It indicates that 
along with these other ratios, you ensure it ensures that money is not being borrowed to pay the dividend because it's showing just how sustainable it is over the long term. Now, really, I would look into dividend aristocrats and dividend kings that have 25 years of dividend growth for an aristocrat and 50 years of dividend growth for a king. These are high value companies. Now, the trouble with this is obviously you pay a bit of a premium for that history. And that is just something that can't be helped. The likes of Coca-Cola have been doing business for a very, very long time. And their dividend can be trusted, can be relied upon, and so can their business model. These businesses are some of the most stable, low-risk companies that you will find anywhere in the world. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a healthy dividend yield of 3 to 5%. This is the percentage of how much your annual dividend would buy of a full share. So as you can see here, it's the, if the share price was $45, your annual dividend $1.20, then your ratio would be 2.7%. Now the golden zone, at least for me, is to achieve between 3 and 5%. Too much lower than 3% without a dividend growth getting involved leaves you liable to not keeping up with inflation and inflation essentially eroding the dividend that you will earn because obviously inflation is always moving it's always going up you need your dividend paying company to at least keep pace with that now if you're starting with a company such as visa that only starts with a 0.7 percent yield but it grows this at a rate of 20 to 30 percent a year which it has done in history then that is super super important to have a, a company like that but if it's starting low and it stays low and it's not growing that massive then that is a really big problem now also you want to avoid the dividend trap as well so anything higher than five or six percent is heading towards a trap ter territory there's a reason why the share price is so low and the dividend is so high this may indicate poor health the higher the yield, there is a risk of a cut or a suspension in this dividend. Now, AT&T is a dividend aristocrat and its current yield is 7.5%. But if you look at its cash flow, it has more than enough cash flow to cover this dividend. But there is, again, some building risk to that, to that company, essentially, because the yield is creeping higher and higher and eventually it will get to a unsustainable level now we haven't got there yet its dividend is very very well covered so me personally i'm watching it closely but i see no reason why i would take action on that at the moment but it's just something to be aware of the golden zone is three to five percent sustainable uh and you're able to get that year over year, quarter after quarter, no problem. You don't really want to be worrying about whether your golden dividend portfolio stocks are going to be paying you next month and whether, that, or whether they're going to cut that dividend and then whether they're going to, that share price will then tank. You don't really want to be worrying about that if you're going to possibly help it. So keeping to a company that's got a nice 3 to 5% sustainable yield is a great way to build that income going going forward and just in in the most sustainable way possible so all of the companies in your portfolio whether they're in different sectors which they should be they should be in the medical field they should be in the manufacturing field communications anything like that you want to have the three to five percent yield because without having that you leave yourself open to inflation at one end and if you don't do it at the other end and you go yield chasing you'll get your fingers burned at the other end as well and that's not particularly good either so there you have it guys those are some of the golden rules when it comes to picking the best dividend stocks one thing that i forgot to mention that i didn't make a slide on is that you want a good dividend cover ratio as well so you want the dividend been paid to be covered at least one and a half times over giving the company a little bit of free play what you don't want is them to be borrowing money to pay the dividend or the dividend only just being covered by cash flow that is an indication of quite poor health as well and an incoming dividend cut eventually or they're going to take on debt to pay it both of which are bad so just one extra thing that i'd like to add is dividend cover should be 1.5 times over 
Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have some of your own rules that you follow, then do please feel free to pop them in the comment section below. That'd be absolutely amazing. Um, and then yeah, smash that like button, get this out to as many people as possible so we can help as many people as possible and consider subscribing to my channel as well. Thank you very much.